Hi friends, it's Bridget. I am still rolling along here on making all sorts of my baskets out of fabric and out of my strips of fabric from my stash. And I splurged and got the big thing of steam a seam. I I'm just all in now. So what I'm going to work on is trying to make a, just a little tiny little trinket tray. And I'm starting here with an eight by eight inch square. So I will be using this as my base. I thought the denim would be cute for the, the bottom of the trinket tray. And I'm going to set these aside for the moment. And I'm going to cut myself a piece of eight by eight. And actually, I think I'm going to go a little larger because I can cut it down. So I'm going to take this and I have my paper rotary cutter and I'm just going to eyeball it and I am just going to give it an extra quarter inch around here and this will give me a nice bit of leeway so that I can add my fabric strips that I'd like to cut up as you know and then I will be using this as my base. It's a really nice piece of fabric, but I wanted something that was blue and I only had a little bit of it. Someone had given it to me during mask making time. It was a scrap piece. So here I have this and that will be nice. And I will be able to cut that down after I do my strips and apply them. And then I'm going to sew this together and see how it goes. I came up with a little bit of a method and we will see how it comes together. And I'm a little worried that it might be a little too heavy once I, you know, because I will be sandwiching it and turning it and then I will be top stitching. So we're, we're going to see how it goes. And then also before I go ahead and take my fabric strips. Once I have my fabric strips on, I'm going to again add my yummy organza because I'm all about it and it's just too much fun not to. So let me do my strips and then we will put this little trinket tray together. I finished my little piece of textile art and I ironed it and I tried to get right to the edges here. So now I have my template here, but I think I'm going to try to get it onto 
my piece of backing fabric first before I cut it down. That seems to make sense to me at the moment. I had a little trouble with the um, stickiness. I was going to just use this parchment, you know, to iron with, but some of the stickiness is on this paper that I took off the steam seam. So I hope the whole roll is not like that. And if it is, I hope it doesn't prove to be a problem because I have a lot of it there. That's uh, the roll is three yards by 24 inches, I believe. I'm looking at the box. Yes, it is three yards of it by 24 inches. So doing little small projects is going to, uh, you know, the, that amount is going to take me a long way. Okay, so that came off nicely. That came off super nicely. And I am going to lay this on here. But I do not want, let's see. I'm going to have to get my Teflon sheet because I do not want this excess on my iron, though I suppose I could cut it before I iron it. Why not, right? So let me try doing that and hopefully that won't mess up my project. So now I'm going to take the excess off. I'm gonna get my rotary cutter because this is my eight by eight. And that's what I want for my little trinket tray. I'm going to take that off. See if I can salvage that. Okay, yeah, it's a little feisty. Okay, put that aside. I am going to try to save those, but I don't know where the limit is. But I'm just loving playing with all these fabrics. So, all right. <clears throat> Pardon me. We have that, and that's going to work out nicely. Okay. And so now I need to um, steam this onto here. So let me steam that, and I will come back, and then I'm going to be placing my... Organza right over the top of that, which is going to look really pretty. So let me steam and I'll be back in a second. I gave that a good steam and it seems to be pretty good. And now I'm going to take my organza and just cut a piece down. I have so much of this, I can't believe. I, I'm not sure what the roll is. I just think it's like 100 yards. So I'm going to have that color for quite a while. I'm just going to get this up in the upper right hand, left-hand corner, excuse me. And I am just going to use my little weights. And I'm just going to cut this piece. There we go. And now, before I flip it, since it's already nice and tidy and positioned, I'm going to grab my Wonder Clips. So I guess they should be this way because this is upside down at the moment. And I'm just going to clip it. go. Take my weights off. Flip it over. Oh, that's going to be pretty. And I am going to use this nice light blue this time. Another gifted thread. And I think that's going to be stunning. 
So let me go quilt that up, which is not going to take much time because it's a smaller piece. I am going to go a little crazy here and just snip these little threads, but you will never see them. <laughs> but I can see them right now. So, oh boy, getting a little crazy here with everything. All righty. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. I finished quilting my little piece of textile art here and it's always enjoyable. It's really pretty. So now I want to make my little trinket tray and it's quite easy. So all I'm going to do is going to use my friction pen to mark. I'm going to start here. And right at the corner, I am going to actually clip this first because it does have some, some stiffness to it, which is exactly what I want because I didn't use any interfacing. So I'm going to just get it down here. And I want to try to be as precise as I can. So I'm going to mark one inch in. So there's my one inch. And then on the fold line, I'm going to mark in two inches. And then I'm just going to take my ruler and point to point, I am going to make a line. And that's going to be my stitch line. I want to do it again over here. I'm flipping it because I'm going to take this and I like to sew with my bulk outside of my presser foot. So to the left of my sewing machine. So again, one inch here and then two inches here and make a line. And this is creating my corners for my little tray. And I'm going to stitch on this line back tacking at each end. And of course, refolding it and doing it here as well. And I am going to do the exact same thing for my piece of denim. I did all my corners and now I want to cut this excess off. So I am just going to probably a little under a quarter of an inch I am cutting. I don't want that bulk. Do I want to save this scrap is the question. <laughs> it's awfully cute. Why not? I have a scrap pile right to my right. There we go. And I'm going to do the same for my piece of denim. I think I'll just tidy up these loose ends here. Alrighty, so now I'm just going to put this together. I mean, I could knock off the corners, I suppose, and do this. I think that makes sense to me. So I'm just going to knock that corner off on all of them, nope, making sure not to get too close. And this is just a lot of fun. I mean, these are going to be great around the holidays. I can make a few of these to give to friends and family. 
All right, just gonna tidy this up here. And now I want to put it together. And all I'm going to do is put right sides together. And I am going to clip my corners. And you could either open this up or you could go to side to side, whichever. I mean, I think I might do side to side as long as that little seam is married up. So there we go. going to put another clip here, here, and here. And I need to leave a spot to turn. And maybe I will sew it from this side. Nope, I will sew it from this side. It's easier to see. So I'm going to sew this with my needle here. And I am going to take my friction pen again, and I am going to, excuse me, just make an opening so I can turn this. Actually, I think I kind of want to try to get it as wide as I can. So I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, leaving this open for turning. I did my stitching all the way around the perimeter and I back tacked on each end of my opening and now I'm ready to turn it around. And as I said before in other videos, I never seem to give myself enough of an opening. It's just one of the things I have done for years is not give myself enough of a gap to birth the project, but I guess it's keeping my hands strong. And I'm gonna grab a chopstick, which is always handy to have. And let's see how this guy's turning out. All right. This looks really nice. I'm pleased. My seams are lined up nicely, very nicely. There is some bulk in there. So now what I want to do is I need to do some top stitching. I'm going to close my gap. I'm going to clip that. All right, that looks pretty good. And now I want to go ahead and top stitch around the edge. Just kind of try to get as close as I can. Oh, I remember when I made that turn. I didn't get it exact. There's a little bit of a blip there. But this is really nice. I, I like this. You could put your car keys in it, leave it in your mud room. That's really sweet. Without my hair. <laughs> All righty. As I go around a top stitch, if this proves to be too bulky for me, I'm going to top stitch from edge to edge, edge to edge, edge to edge. I'm not going to worry about going over that bulk if my machine doesn't like it. And I am going to change my thread. I'm going to sew from this way and I am going to use that light blue thread that I have that I did all this quilting with. But on the back, I'm gonna use a darker thread. I have like a navy blue, so I think that will be nice. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll take a look. This came out very nice. I am pleased with the results. I did not have any trouble going over the 
bulk here with my machine, I'm happy to say, I thought it was gonna be a little too much, but I took my time, I slowed down, and just let the, I have a little bit of a tiny fold there, but that's okay, nothing's perfect. But it went over there fine. I just took my time and I didn't even have to hand crank it. So it was great. And now I have another little, sweet little basket, a little trinket tray. And I like this because you can kind of, you know, have it more so, you know, with your, just get your hand in there if need be to just, it can be great for jewelry on your dresser. I absolutely love the organza and the strips. And I am cutting my own strips here, of course, as you've seen me do many times. But what I want to do is I am cherishing my Liberty scraps and I am trying to decide which baskets I love the most. And then I'm going to make them in the Liberty. I have a fair amount left, but I don't want to experiment with it. I want to experiment with other strips because once that Liberty is gone, it will be gone. And I don't even want to think about it <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, but it will happen at some point in time. The end measurements are four and a half and about one inch high. So four and a half square roughly by one inch high. And again, this was the starting point of two eight inch squares. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate all you guys. I am so thrilled to have all of my subscribers. I love this supportive community and the encouragement. And if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps out. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be great if you did. I hope you're getting something, a little something from this crazy creativity of mine that I'm going through. <laughs> so until next time, keep creating. Have fun out there. Bye.